Hello Toronto and welcome to beautiful Withrow Park here in Riverdale in the east end of Toronto. I am Suzanne of Lewis & Company Modern Real Estate and I am so excited to share with you some behind the scenes featured today of the general manager and the festival director of Dusk Dances, which is in its 30th year. It is so exciting, this beautiful outdoor festival that's going to be taking place here in this park. I have been attending and a sponsor of this event for many, many, many years since my kids were like this big. I'm really excited. This is going to be a, such a special year. You're in for a treat. I'm so excited to introduce to you the new leadership team at Dust Dances, the festival in its 30th year. Hi everybody, my name is Shivani Joshi. I'm the new general manager. I trained as a Bharatanatyam dancer in Indian classical dance form and I'm so excited to be taking on this role. Hey everybody, I'm Sophie. I'm the new festival director at Dust Dances. Uh, I'm a flamenco dancer and I'm super excited to uh, be bringing public dance to Wither Park. For someone who's never heard of Dust Dances before, mm -hmm seemingly impossible, but how would you describe it to a first time a newbie? Ooh, that's a great question. I would describe it as a wonderful outdoor site specific dance festival. Um, we start off our festival with a dance workshop that's free. We all want to be moving together, gathering with each other, seeing one another. And then we take a wonderful walk around this beautiful park. And as we take this beautiful walk, we happen amongst these beautiful dance pieces that are located in different corners. Um, and as we take this walk together, we see the sunset, we get to witness beautiful art, um, and at the end we get to dance together again. So it really is a wonderful dance festival that allows us to find community with one another. It really is quite magical. All right, so what keeps you motivated and inspired to really push the boundaries of dust dances and the festival? I mean, it's kind of built in because I feel like the expectation level is already appropriately super high. Right. And this is like one of the longest running outdoor dance festivals in Canada. And it's rare to have a dance festival or an arts event that is so well known, both in its industry and in its professional community and in the public, in the public eye. I think the thing that keeps me most motivated to continue pushing the boundaries is that dance especially, all live art forms, but dance especially, is a physical thing that is happening live in the moment. Mm. Dance reflects, um, you know, many things, but it reflects like our cultural state of being. Art reflects life, life reflects art, etc. Um, and so... I feel like, especially in the pandemic and as we recover from it or continue inside of it, it's, um, you know, as our world begins to um, change and we are all trying to, you know, contribute in a different level, we need more from our art. You know, like during the years where things are harder and um, people are, are struggling more in the city, we need more from our art. Like we need to be entertained, but we also need our art to to grow with us mm -hmm. and to continue to reflect what it is that we're experiencing as people. Um, and so I think there are some really interesting offerings in the program this year, especially that are a little bit new for the festival that I think I believe will um, push the boundaries a little bit, but our audience is so ready for this. And I think that it's exciting every year to see how our community dance audiences respond so well to the work that we're offering you know they understand it and they feel excited and inspired or left with something meaningful from it how do you make sure or ensure that dust dances remains inclusive and diverse not only through the work the artists who are performing but also the community who's watching being really diligent about finding artists in the city that represent the diversity that we have already in our community. I think another part of it is finding new ways to attract audiences that haven't been able to access the traditional proscenium before. A huge part of this festival is that it's done outdoors. It's There's no ticketed entry. You can walk in at any time. You can walk in halfway through the performances and still be a part of the festival. So I think a really beautiful part of the way this festival is set up lends itself to encouraging audiences to join us 
And I also think that both of us being racialized artists, both of us being entrenched in our own dance communities and other dance communities allows us to bring in community members into our staffing choices, into our programming choices, into the kind of outreach that we do and who we connect with and who we invite. And I remember a moment in my own dance journey where somebody held my hand and walked me into a room. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our job to do the same, to find somebody and hold their hand and walk them in, especially if it's the kind of art programming that they've never had the opportunity to access before. Oh, I love that. That's so Thank nice. That, that visual is beautiful. I love that. <laughs> this year, for the first time, we have an ASL translator joining oh. our cast for the festival. Um, and we're super excited about that. It's something we haven't been able to offer in the past, but this is the year. Mm -hmm. um, and this translator is, you know, like an animated, exciting person to behold. So I think this is one of the ways that we are yeah, trying to increase our accessibility um, and while it's, you know, amazing to have the work happen out here, outdoors, in the park, we know that there are ways that we could continue to grow. Mm. Um, and we know that there are things we don't yet know about that. And so I would also say, you know, to our audience that, like, if there are ways that you feel that we could include you more, um, please. That no, is that's so, so valuable for so, us to know. So um, the person who's going to be helping with the sign language yeah. um, is going to be translating Fly Lady Die? Yeah. Okay, maybe we can talk a little bit about Fly Lady Die. Because, I would love to. I feel like, you know, obviously the dances are beautiful. The park and the setting is amazing. But your um, MC, and mm -hmm. I've seen many because there's, I, you know, again, I've been attending for many, many, many years. Um, but talk a little bit about Fly Lady Di, because she's pretty special. Fly Lady Di is a queen who I first met back in 2013, 12. She was DJing at a party that I was at. Um, and so I knew her first as a DJ, then as a dancer, and most recently as a comedian. Um, and as the host for Dust Dances, she's returning for her third year in a row. Um, and she has performed at Dust Dances as a dancer, a choreographer herself. Um, and yeah, she's theatrical. She's bopping around. And she is, yeah, just so a fun, super yeah, fun person. So fun. And this year we've given her a couple of extra elements Ooh, to play with. Okay. It's our 30th birthday season, so we have to be a little bit extra, obviously. Of course. Uh, so this year, she will be pulling up to Dust Dance's 30th birthday party with a few friends Ooh. and some extra surprises. And yes, this ASL translator will be part of um, the host team, basically, oh. uh, that Dai will be leading. Oh, it's gonna so be super excited. fun. Yeah. So excited. Yeah, 30th birthday extravaganza. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what is a way maybe the number one way or a way that the community can help to support Dust Dances and make sure that it continues on till its 50th year. Mm, yeah, that's great. Well, the first way is by just coming out. We love seeing folks in the audience. We want to get to know all of you. And, and if you're here and if you feel so inclined, you can do a little tip tap on our tip tap machines. Um, you can contribute a little bit to our wonderful popcorn machine and um, other snack sales that we have. But ultimately, the most important thing is having everybody there and having the community come out to join us um, and staying in touch. We are constantly finding new community partnerships and finding ways to connect. Um, and we'd love to have you. That's perfect. Yes, that's <laughs> absolutely true. The more, the merrier. And last but definitely not least, Sophie, when is Dust Dances? <laughs> Dust Dances is happening every night from August 4th to 11, starting at 7 p.m. right here in Withrow Park. So exciting. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, got You're like, I'm Shivani, and I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, the general manager. <laughs>